Sorry. You're jumpy. Oh my god. I think I peed a little. How did you not hear me coming? I was... I don't think we're the only ones here. Yeah, Kate saw a little girl looking out a window at us when we were outside. That's who I saw. A little girl. Mr. Demet probably has family, a staff, maybe friends. Yeah, why is it weird who that... Knows? That said, this place does give me the willies. It's, um, it's unique. Are you singing? Oh, yeah, that's my being scared song. This is my don't be scared song. Sing it and I won't be scared long. <laughs> Doesn't really work. I bet. I liked it. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, I think I'm around the corner. 183? This is me. Okay. Okay. Good luck out there. Don't get lost. Scream if you need me for anything. Thanks. I got you. Nothing to be scared of. Actually, hey. Yeah? Why don't you hang a second while I unpack, then I can help you find your room? Something about this place makes me want to use the buddy system. Yes, thanks. I'd end up lost, probably. It's, it's just a haul, dude. I like her skirt. And here we are. Well, it's, um, cozy? I love her face. I think she's beautiful. Um, disappointed, playful. Oh, well, you know. Disappointed. Hmm? It's one step above one of those Japanese capsule hotels. Oh, come on. Could be way worse. Like our room in Topeka. No, do not. I've blocked that from memory and don't want it coming back. Because of the roaches? Because if you snore. Oh, wait, let me see um, her traits here, Jamie. She's witty, stubborn, romantic, and antagonistic. Yeah, I got that. She's very antagonistic. She is close with Aaron. Her friendship or her relationship with Mark is... A lot higher than Kate's with Mark. Um, and Kate and Mark are like a couple. Maybe Mark and Jamie are brother and sister. That would explain why he she was teasing him so badly about the bridge. And then I would cut her some slack if that was if that were the case. I don't think it's it could be a love triangle, maybe, but I think maybe they're brother and sister. I'm not sure. Uh, where's the bathroom? Wait, what? Old school. Ah, uh, gross school. What if I have to pee in the middle of the night? Am I gonna walk in on Charlie sitting on the pot? Guess that means there's no mini bar either. Huh? Shows what you know. I what is that? Drink Wine. that. Genius. Uh, I feel like if we start drinking, Charlie will find out and lecture me and make me feel like an asshole again. Yeah, he does that, but. We're not on the clock. Dodd and Tor rigging to shoot. Which is hard to do drunk. <laughs> I'm not suggesting we get full on hammered before we work. Why are you doing that? I'm thirsty. Also, you're cute when you're worked up. I don't, cute? Oh, you think see? I'm cute? Hmm? Oh. Oh. Lip balm. You're so clumsy, want to share mine? Want to share mine? Mm -hmm. Gotta stick on my own if you want to share a lip cooties. Mm -hmm. Thanks, but I can find mm -hmm. mine. She likes her. <laughs> Where'd it go? Uh... Let's let's check out what we've what kind of damage we've done here. Um, Jamie invited Aaron into her room. Aaron dropped her chapstick below the bed. Young love, it says. Oh, see. As his bondo and his high school buddies would say, they're lesbianas. And these two are rivals. Okay. Uh, okay. It's uh, all the way against the wall. See it? <coughs> you okay? <coughs> Shit. <coughs> you trying to scare me now? No. Revenge? Because 
Good job. Does she have asthma? Oh, yeah, she does. Oh, shoot. She can use her inhaler to stop asthma attacks. Okay. So we have the... The lock picker. The person who has the doohickey with the... She can do stuff with the electrical equipment or whatever. And then we have the asthmatic. <laughs> her tool is her inhaler. Erin struggled to breathe after inhaling dust. She used her inhaler. Oh, shoot. I hope I don't get this girl killed by suffocating her. That would be awful. Um, you sure you're okay? You sure you're okay? Because, yeah, maybe me scaring you didn't help, did it? No. But seriously, it's not your fault. I just, I... I try to pretend like it isn't a thing, you know? I, like, I don't want to be depending on an inhaler. I try to mind over matter it, but... Dust and allergies and... I just need to be more careful. You sure? I bet... Sure. Somebody's I'm listening sure. and finding out their weaknesses. So, uh, yeah. And their, their fears. Cozy. You gonna try that? <laughs> Does that and answer your question? Now you're poisoned. It's not that bad. You're not lying. It's piquant. Decent piquant. vintage. Sure. I'm getting oaky undertones, a hint of citrus. And I want to say a strong, healthy amount of moldy sweat drops. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I hate you. You are such a liar. Flirtatious. Mischievous. Let's, let's do it. Ooh, sorry. I thought you meant the thinking you were a cute thing. Really? Um, if my cheeks are red, it's from this wine. Not because I am bashful. I swear. Really. Sorry. Didn't mean to make you feel weird. I, uh, yeah, it's just, we work together and Charlie is always on me about being more professional and- I get it. No, I mean, I, I'm not saying I don't appreciate it. Erin. Er or that I don't think you're cute too. It's just, um. Shut up and kiss me. Move it in, girl. Move it in. Give the people what they want. What are you doing? I, oh my god. I, uh... I... <laughs> oh, you bitch! I'm just fucking with you. I wanted to kiss you for months. I just was scared to make a real move. <laughs> oh my goodness. This game is steamy. <gasps> sorry. Sorry. Oh, be careful. She got asthma. Who is that? It's one of those rats with a fat ass tail. <sighs> what the fuck? What the fuck, Charlie? You just standing there trying to listen in? What? No, I was just about to knock. What do you want? Did I, did I interrupt something? No, we're just talking shop. We're worried about the power grid handling all of our gear. Yeah, yes. If this place is running on a generator, we need to know what it's putting out. I don't care what you guys are doing. Then why are you lurking? I can't find my room, and I need a fucking cigarette. <laughs> Jeez. These Cheery Charlie is... Our numbers. Losing his they cool. They go up and down in order. Thank you. I've just been down there. Look, give me ten, then we should get a rough plan for getting our first shot. We have all evening. Can we plan after dinner? I'd like to chill for a minute after the trek getting here. I want to be shooting after dinner. You've got 10 minutes. Jeez. Okay, we'll be down in a few then. Real slave driver, Mr. Charlie oh, Aaron, here. I checked my blue bag. No cigarettes. That's where I put them. Come and show me. Maybe one of us is colorblind and doesn't know what a blue bag is. Jeez. 
<laughs> Surprised, uh, seductive. Seductive. To be continued, then? Yes. Definitely. It's a date. Um. Good luck finding your rooms. Charlie, Charlie. He's really, uh, <clears throat> needing his cigarette, I guess. She's. Come on, come on, let's go. Let's go. Oh my. Where the hell are they going? The fuck out of here. That's where they're going. Somebody's watching you. Oh. He's already got somebody. No. It's... Oh. It's Kate. But it's not Kate. Okay, Charlie. Well? I'm looking. Oh, Kate wanted you to have this. Breaking down walls, navigating the maze of anxiety. Are you fucking kidding me? I think she thought it might help with your stress, or... Absolutely not. I'm not stressed, okay? Do I look fucking stressed? Uh... Yeah. That was rhetorical. Your cards came out nice enough. Oh, yeah. Embossing. Makes a huge difference. You old guys love business cards. <laughs> old school. You old school guys. I also put it on heavy stock and did the logo in foil. Damn. I should have had one ready for Mr. Dumet. Well, Mr. Dumet is long gone. Did you find them? I... no. I swear I put them in here. I don't understand. <sighs> Look, stop tearing around in there like a maniac. Be organized about it. Okay, so he seemed like a really uh I mean his relationship with everybody is is pretty decent, I'd say. So, I mean, people seem to like him, but um yeah, he he seemed really cheery and like He's on nicotine withdrawal. Yeah, he he's he's totally changed. It says he's cynical, careless, overbearing, and determined. Like he seems like just this jolly workaholic guy who might be a, you know a little bit hard on his uh, employees, but he's just yeah, he's not doing well right now. I guess when people need their nicotine and don't get it this happens oh geez not good methodical blue bag front pocket i made a specific mental note of it they're gone charlie gone just like that are you saying somebody took them i i don't actually i can see kate doing that or jamie i'm sorry It's fine. Let's just get on with things. This place is massive. Surely there is a pack of cigarettes in here somewhere. Even if they're ancient. You need them that bad? There was a bar in the lobby. There must be cigarettes in the bar, right? I mean, technically, it's not legal to smoke in bars, so... Come on, we're checking. If you find them first, all will be forgiven. Find the bar. All right, is there anything we can explore in this room? I don't know why we would want our lighter out right now. Oh, what's this? 
T.S. Hartley, The Yellow Cross. From the best-selling author of Shroud of Innocence comes a thrilling reimagining of one of history's most merciless massacres. Kill them all, God will recognize his own. July 22nd, 1209. In just one day, the peaceful city of Vizier's has been plunged into massacre. Tyrant crusader Simon de Montfort, de Montfort is determined to purge the city of all practicing Cathar, Cathars by the most horrific means necessary. Deep in the church of St. Mary Magdalene's hidden caverns, a last remaining group of Cathar prefecti have hidden away, but can't hide forever. The youngest prefecti, Father... Escrivan has come up with a desperate plan to escape. Your fingers are in the way, buddy. With the help of his lifelong friend, Catholic priest Murat. But it all hinges on a fine balance of bravery and faith. Gripping, thrilling history come alive. This is Hartley at its finest, says the Herald. That's, that's great. Great reading for your guests. Just some nice, light, pleasant reading about murder and massacre all right i guess we'll pull out the lighter actually the scope of this place is no, there's light i can't believe we've lucked into this are you worried it will make our other episodes look cheap they are cheap can't be helped this will be the one that people remember the one that wins an emmy exactly that's the spirit stick with me erin i'm going places breaking down walls get another season let me worry about that. You stick to making sure that my life runs smoothly. I would like and I'll to make read. Sure you keep working. If you don't Sound mind. Sound good? Uh, if we could sure. quit yapping a little bit. Professor J.P. Hunter is an author and counselor with over 20 years of experience helping patients overcome their anxiety and panic attacks. Within this book, you will find a step-by-step -step guide designed to give you the tools you need to find a path out of the maze of anxiety. Follow a unique monthly plan. You will learn anxiety, busting tips, and trips to, tricks to incorporate into your busy daily life. Professor J.P. Hunter has helped thousands of people manage their anxieties and given them the confidence they need to break down walls and tackle their demons. Face on. Breaking down walls. Navigating the maze of anxiety is a national bestseller. Cool. I want to try to explore as much as I can this time around because I always try to explore, but I always miss stuff. I always miss important things. So I don't know why I keep always miss stuff in these games. Grantham Dumet, architect. Business card found. One of five found. More collectibles. Not super excited about that, but. Cool, I guess. What is the point of this? Oh gosh, I don't trust this room. Ah, an obel. Is quite a bit to explore. Let's get, let's get a little bit faster here. Let's try to make a little sweep of the second floor. I'll hold on a second. I'll come right back over there. All right. From Dumet to Joseph Morello, invitation. 
Good evening. Thank you for allowing me to contact you directly. Your publisher said that you were very keen to hear from me. It seems we have a mutual interest. I've spent several years constructing the ultimate Holmes tourist experience by faithfully recreating the World's Fair, Ho World's Fair Hotel. We have not yet opened to the public, as there are finishing touches to complete, and I consider a man of your knowledge could provide insight that is invaluable before our official opening. Therefore, I invite you to visit the hotel for the weekend. The experience is designed to accommodate groups of five guests, so I extend the invitation to four friends or family of your choosing. I must insist that this invitation be kept confidential until the hotel is publicly announced, so please only invite guests that you can trust to do so. I hope you can accept my invitation. Please reply to confirm your attendance and the four additional guests that would you would like to bring. Should you accept, a limousine will pick you up Pick yourself and your guests up at 7 p.m. this Friday underneath the railway bridge at the corner of St. Wallace Ave and West 63rd Street, Englewood, Chicago. I'm sure you'll find the experience very interesting indeed. Sincerely, Grantham Dumet. Hi, Grantham. Thanks. I'd be delighted to come along. I'm sure I can get my wife and two girls to join me. My brother Francis is in town at the minute, so... That'll make up the five. I trust them all with my life, so no sweat over confidentiality. You trust them all, but they shouldn't have trusted you. Because you just uh, took them all to their death. Good job, Joe. You really fucked up. Hey, Charlie. I was hoping next season, maybe I could do more with the sound design and more creative stuff. Erin, what you already do for this company is very valuable to us. Carrying your bags and picking up your laundry? Absolutely. To get ahead in this industry, you have to pay your dues. Show you're ready to muck in. I... I think you should get an assistant. An assistant? Oh, it was just a stupid idea, Charlie. I'm an just... assistant? A personal assistant. Sort of. And then I could help out with the editing. Pardon me? The editing? The audio mix. Look, I just think you've got so much to give, so much experience. And it's an opportunity to pass that knowledge on. Right. Yes, I suppose it is. And an assistant wouldn't lose my cigarettes, would they? <laughs> exactly. He seems to be the kind so, of person that do you still want to direct movies, Charlie? Doesn't want I anyone else no, but helping I mean with his movies. editing. With a big budget. Like me. And big stars. <laughs> Erin, there's something important that you have to understand. In the work that we do, the very important work, the truth is the star. Oh, right. Yeah, sorry, Charlie. So you don't want to direct movies. Can we move on from this? Don't ask him any questions until he gets his damn cigarettes. We can use a card to open this. Apparently. Okay, what do we have? Postcard? Welcome. <laughs> Mr. Hector Monday. 1992. Mr. Monday, thank you for choosing Twilight Prairie as residence for your mother. Lucinda is already settling in very well. We encourage visitors as often as possible and would look forward to seeing you again. Linda Price, general manager. Okay, I don't know who Hector is. But Lucinda is a nice name. I think that's very pretty. Let's check out the sign-in sheet here. Okay, so looks like it's 2022. Did we not check in oh here we go there's more pages so 
So here's us, Charlie, Kate, Jamie, Mark, and um, E, Charlie, Kate, Jamie, Mark, and then E, the girl that I can't remember her name, I guess. Aaron. Okay, so Brad Fisher, Harrison Lee, Thomas Hall, Joseph Morello. So Joseph came right before us just a few days ago. Check in, check out. Oh boy. So they, okay. So they came on the 19th and they checked out on the 25th. So six days. And then over here, the 29th to the 4th, the 5th to the 18th. So it looks like he likes to play with his food a little bit before, before killing it, you know? He keeps them for like a week or more. I suppose I should be thankful. It's just my cigarettes that are missing and not our gear. Okay. Those people did not check out. No, they didn't. Oh, the handwriting is different. Oh, yeah. I didn't even notice that. Actually, I kind of want to see. Yeah, you're right. It's always the same handwriting that checks them out, too. Yup. Yup. Hey, maybe Mr. Dumet is in the back office. You could just ask him about cigarettes. Oh, he gone. He gone, gone. I don't see any room numbers down here. Maybe these aren't rooms. Doors with keyholes can be unlocked using keys. Uh oh. Dinner time. Locked. Investigate the noise. It's a big looking key right there. Old fashioned kind of key. All right. Let's go see the noise. Oh god. Okay, this is square. Right here is square. Square. Nobody's here. There's the bell. Oh, a key. Jackpot. Erin, I found the key. The bar. Okay. Works for me. Did anything else change around here? You just gone, huh? Starting to get a little bit nervous. <laughs> Why don't I go check for a gift shop or something? I've already had one asthma attack today, and this dust farm is exactly what I don't need. A gift shop might have cigarettes. Exactly. Had a girl. Don't let her wander alone. Hello? Okay, what do we have here? Mr. Dumet? Um, it's upside down. Hello? Good morning to you all. I'm Chester Bell, Assistant Director at the Federal Bureau of Investigation. At approximately 0530 local time, a team led by Special Agent Hector Monday and supported by law enforcement officers conducted a raid of a motel room just outside Birmingham, Alabama to apprehend Manny Sherman, the man known as the Beast of Arkansas. 
using state-of-the-art psychological profiling techniques. Special Agent Monday and members of his task force not only identified their suspect, but predicted his movement with unerring accuracy. I'm delighted to say we have our man. The Beast of Arkansas. <laughs> I kind of want to try to read that, but... Eh. Actually, let's see how far we can get. Okay. At press conference, FBI, Broomingfield, Monday, Chester Bell, blah, blah, blah. Agent Hector Monday concluded a raid at a motel room near Birmingham. Oh, is this just the stuff that they... S no, this is different. Um, apprehended the man that has come to be known by the media as the Beast of Arkansas, Manny Sherman. The Don... Uh, I can't read that because it's kind of cut off, which took place at an undisclosed motel believed to be the culmination of almost 18 months of investigative work by FBI Behavioral Science Unit Assistant Director Bell went on to say, using modern psychological profiling techniques, Special Agent Monday assembled a task force um, here in Alabama to form a strategy that identified the suspect and predicated their movements, or predicted their movements. We now have a... Oh, I can't read the rest because it's all smudged, but it said they, they apprehended him. Apprehended the man. But we did see the postcard of, um... That was addressed to Mr. Monday. It's dark in here. Right? About his mom and the... She was going to like an old folks home or something. So, what happened to Investigator Monday? Why do they have his private um, postcards? Oh god. There's a person there. Of... <laughs> I'm just looking around a little bit. Don't mind me. Okay. Oh no. Charlie. Charlie. I might get burned alive. No, Charlie. I'll try not to let that happen to you. And if it does, I'm sorry in advance. He's like, hey, Charlie, you need a light for your cigarette? Here you go, buddy. All right. Miss Kale, uh, this is 2017, so about five years ago. Miss Kelly Schroeder, once again, I would like to thank you for the incredible work you and your team achieved at the hotel. I'd like to extend my heartfelt condolences. The accident that befell the skeleton crew on the lake is nothing short of a tragedy, and I, in part, feel responsible. In honor of them, I have spent the last several months applying the finishing touches to the hotel, and I'm proud to say that we are almost ready to open to the public. Please allow me to extend my sincere gratitude. I invite yourself and the rest of your team to join me for the grand opening ceremony. 7 p.m. Friday, November 17th, 2017. I promise a spectacular evening with themed entertainment, including a barbershop quartet. <laughs> I'm sure you will agree that all of your hard work was worth it when you enjoy the unique hotel experience. Sincerely, Richard Belknap. Cigarettes! Oh, maybe I should have talked to the guy first. Yes! <laughs> yes! Maybe we'll need to talk to the guy to <sighs> get them. Exact change, exact change only. Damn it! Well, we gotta get change from the guy at the counter. Or is it a mannequin? Wow, 
Wow. An animatronic. Ha! That's what amazing. What would it be, Mr. Demet, sir? <laughs> I'll have a packet of cigarettes, please. A packet of cigarettes, please. Hello? Hello? A packet of smokes. Figured it was too good to be true. Never mind. Thank you, Robo Bowman. Certainly, sir. Whatever you wish. <laughs> no fucking way. I don't suppose you've got any spare change back there, have you? It's all not. I don't like him. I don't like this animatronic. Next round's on me. Third Promise. jump scare already? Jeez. Give me the damn. I need a cigarette now, and I've never smoked one in my life. Yes. Stay off the daddy. Oi. Oh, Oi. no. Oh, no, 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 please, come on, no! So close. Yet so far. Find a way to get the cigarettes out of the dispenser. A robot man. Got anything useful for me? I guess not. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. What? No, come on, you piece of shit. Don't do this to me. Antique rubbish. Give them to me! Give me my cigarettes! Right, you. That's it. I'm gonna go and get my key grip, and they are gonna kick the shit out of you. Hey, Charlie. Yeah. I'm still in the bar. I think it's Where did it time. go? We should get everyone else. Okay, I'm coming. And I'm coming back for you with a fucking pry bar. Are you alone in there? Who's that behind the bar? What? How the fuck? How did it get back so fat? It was the person behind us? I don't know, man. Okay, Mark. Mark. Hello, Mark. Mark is protective. He's sincere. He's immature. And he's passionate, and he has a good relationship with pretty much everybody. Okay. Hey, had a thought on an intro segment. You want to shoot now? She took her glasses yeah. if off. If we get it shot and in the bank, maybe Charlie will stop rewriting everything I come up with. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sure. What? Nothing. Just give me a sec, and I'll be good to go. Actually, I think I'm I like her look nothing better with the sunglasses. Away at you? Yes. How many times have you cleaned that lens? I'm just prepping my gear. Really? Yeah. Always focusing on the detail, Mark. What about taking a huge risk and just do something? 
I watched you fuss for a whole week before you turned down that job offer, all because you had to take one extra train to get there. The job wasn't the right move. The train thing confirmed it. Flimsy. I don't buy it. You don't have to buy it. Come on, let's just shoot this. Let's use natural light so we can do it alone. Didn't the lobby have skylight? I don't remember. I just want to look decent. You look good in any light. You look good in any light. I'm not worried. Are you trying to butter me up? Yes. Is it working? Marginally. I'll Margin? Mar Margarine? Why are you letting them all think She should have said marginally. I feel like if Jamie knew the truth, she might back off. I mean, they all just assumed. I can't decide if that's sweet or selfish. Or both. We're hitting the old golden hour. Can I say something? Can I say something? What is, well, I don't know what he's going to say, so I don't want to pick that. We're hitting the golden hour. We should be able to find a good spot. <laughs> I don't know why you camera dorks call it that. It's 15 minutes at best. Yes and no, if you have the right reflector. 15 minutes at the most. <laughs> Look, let's go find some light and get started. Thanks for doing this. You're only asking me because your arms are too short for a good selfie angle. My arms are not short. <laughs> Where to? Uh, the balcony would make for a cool angle. Let's find a way up there. Okay, but first I gotta explore everything. Am I crazy or did we not come from this direction? How's the new place? Uh, use marks. Can It'll you shut up? Now. You like it? It's just a place to keep my shit and crash. Short term lease, so I can take my time to find something I really like. I was trying to read that, and I think I can't go back and find it again, huh? That's. I can use this camera mm, for something. Smart plan. You said I needed to be out, so I got out. I was complimenting you. No, just saying. Whoop. I was worried you'd be sleeping on the couch in the studio while you obsessed over finding the perfect place with the right wall color near the proper train station or bus stop or... Maybe we should just add this topic to our discussion no fly zone list. Yeah, you're probably right. Oh, so since we can't I want do a discussion it tomorrow, no fly zone list. next weekend okay to come and get my stuff? Whoa, there, bucko. I was just checking for light. Remember our talk about boundaries? I need my room to be my private, safe place. Sometimes I'm glad we went to therapy. Other times, it makes for some weird ass rules. I didn't know it stopped the dialogue back then. Uh, did Are they like, did they break up and they didn't tell anybody? I feel like I missed, I feel like I missed something here. Or are they is their relationship just a secret or what? Okay. There's weird. something back here. Weird looking room. Got some little bottles with drop. Looks like droppers. Sounds like recent breakup chatter. Okay, I was like kind of half paying attention because I was distracted by the camera, and then I accidentally skipped through the dialogue. I was like, shit. What were they talking about? But she said like she uh she was gonna like he was gonna pick up his things from her house or something, right? Something like that. Oh, here we go, guys. Here we go. Someone's gonna die. The lighthouse. Going down underground. And I, I mean, I don't know what... What? United. United. So maybe we want them to be together. I don't know if that means we want to go down in the creepy little hole in the ground or what. Sometimes it's just really not clear what these things are trying to show us. We can get these two back together. They'll be fine. They just need to live through so like life-threatening. here, are we breaking one of his rules? We did say not to go wandering. And we did practically bust the door down and get in here. We? 
So maybe we should take care. Probably. Yeah, I feel like Dumet is the kind of dude who loses his shit if you break his rules. Whoa, oh, what was your first guy? clue when he took away our phones like we were kind of teenagers? Did you not see that? Uh, Are we not gonna... Guess we're not totally alone. Oh, there we go. Yep, he saw the guy. I don't know if that's gonna help us. <laughs> shit. <laughs> that scared the fuck out of me. Yeah. Uh-huh. So... The camera, we can kind of see some light. What is this? Oh. Oh. 4K. Good shit. I guess we probably don't need the camera unless, like, certain times when we're supposed to use it. But it is nice we can, uh... See, oh, see, there's a fireplace, but I wouldn't have known that otherwise. Alright, what's this? Was he the devil? Joseph Morello. The truth behind America's first serial killer. Since his first book in 2002, Joseph Morello has been fascinated by investigating serial killers. And none have intrigued him more than H.H. H. Holmes. In his latest paperback, Moreno Morello examines more than 15 years of his own research and writing, separating fact from fiction to provide evidence about the truth behind the historic case of America's first serial killer. Was he the devil? A man, a must for Morello fans, Real Killers magazine. It's like an analysis of your worst nightmares, says Review Monthly. A little notch this in the... This takes me back. I used to carve the hell out of my desk in middle school. Rebel. I'm not sure that's what this is, but okay. You shouldn't be carving your desk though. That's that's really not cool. Well, it did say he was um wasn't one of his traits. Um what what was it? <laughs> Immature, that's the word I'm looking for. I never did that carved into my desk at school and like uh defacing it no i never did did you do you think that's someone everyone does that's not a normal thing to do oh mark can extend his monopod to reach high objects That's handy. Oh my god. Births, deaths, marriages. Mr. and Mrs. Robert Hall of Silver Spring announced the birth of their daughter, Marilyn, on June 10th at White Oak Hospital. Elaine and Stephen Wright of North Park announced the birth of their son, Maurice, on June 10th at White Oak Hospital. On behalf of their daughter, Lucinda Monday, proud grandparents, George and Irene Monday of Silver Spring announced the birth of their grandson, Hector Whalen, on June 11th at White Oak Hospital. The one, the bottom one is circled. Okay, so Okay. Anything else? No. Hector Lucinda Lucinda was the son of um I thought was the son of the detective guy also of a Hector I can't see, it's dark. There's gotta be a way through. Oh, we need a key. What's back here? I 
see a ladder. There. See that key? Just need to find a way through. Look at this wallpaper. Fascinating. Manny Sherman, born January 1, 1956. Come on. You know all this. What do you want? What's this? Huh. You've been doing your research, haven't you, Special Agent Monday? What are my favorite television programs? Describe my first pet? What were your friends like as a child? What is this? You're taking a survey, you're trying to learn something. Would it kill you to be direct? You wanted to know what inspired me? As if I wasn't an original? Well, maybe there was one man I found myself a little fascinated by. Henry Howard Holmes. Why? Because he was numero uno. America's first. The guy invented the trade. He set the benchmark, you know? Learn your history, Monday. Read a book. You think because I stuck a blade in some people and get off on it, I'm not smart? I, uh... <laughs> Allegedly, killed 13 people before you got smart enough to find me. Mark and Kate found a tape of Manny Sherman being interviewed by Agent Monday. I feel like I should be taking notes. Ah. <sighs> This game feels like a note-taking game. Oops, Monday is a detective. And then Lucinda is the mom of people. This is old as hell. Everything here is old as hell. I was expecting an old exterior, but remodeled inside. Kissed. A guest book from the hotel. It shows when the crew checked in and when the previous parties checked out before them. Wish I could get a look at it again. A tape from an FBI interview between Special Agent Monday and Manny Sherman. Sherman talks about how Holmes inspired him. Hector Monday interviewed Manny Sherman after successfully leading the investigation into his capture. An article on the front page of a national newspaper from 1997. Agent Hector Monday used psychological profiling to catch a serial killer, Manny Sherman. So 1997. So that was uh, some years ago, like 20 years ago. Postcard from retirement home sent to Hector Monday. His mother, Lucinda, went to live there in 1992. Oh, okay, so Lucinda's, um, so Monday is her son. But she had another son. Book by Joseph Morello. And then Morello is the author. True crime writer and newspaper clipping announcing Hector Monday's birth. Hector is. Oh, okay. So. Okay. So she just had one son that we know of. Print out of an email conversation, Joseph Morello was invited to the hotel with his wife, brother, and two daughters. 
Oh, his daughter's. Invitation to the grand opening of the hotel dated 2017. Hotel opened in 2017. Looks like Dumet is trying to preserve things. Can't be easy all the way out here. I like antiques as much as the next person, but at some point you have to give up the ghost. Rod is gonna set in. Right, that's it. What? But since we got here, I've been smelling something faint, distant. Can't place it, it's decay. Oh, bodies. Old house. Island beaches with dead fish, animals in the wood. Could be anything. Whatever it is, it's dead as hell. Oh, yeah, they're dead as hell. They're so dead. They are so dead. We can drop down, maybe, into... And we jump across. Oh, push. Okay, great. Push it across. Keep your head down. I feel like at any moment, any of these boards could, um, could break and we just fall straight through. Oh, well, looks like we're not getting across anymore this way, so I guess we do need to go down this ladder here. I am busting out the pen and paper. Yep. Oh no, we're being watched. This reminds me of Resident Evil... Which one is it? Two? Well, you know the the bookshelf that you gotta move and stuff? What game was that from? Was it a Resident Evil game? And then you gotta like jump across and then there's like some scary shit that happens and he screamed. You know what I'm talking about? Is there only one Resident Evil game where you have to move a bookshelf? Well, it's I'm I don't know. It's like it's like this. There's like a second story, and there's like several bookshelves lined up, and then you have to like move some of them around. You can move this one? Oh, we actually can. It had to have been like two or three, because I think I played it once in the OG, and then once again in uh, a re one of the remakes. Found an obel. Um, so... Where do we want to move this to? We can move it out. The gap that we can't get through is right here. Last time we moved bookshelves was in Elden Ring. Elden Ring. Not a good game. Truly. Push. 
This should work. Mark? You okay in there? I'll be right back. Um, oh, I get it. Now we have to move this back and then we can go up and yada, yada, yada. Whoa, 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 whoa. Scooch on in there. Scooch on in. Would I prefer a new Dark Souls -y game next from them or another armored core? Dark Souls. <laughs> as much as I enjoy armored core games, well the one I only played one, right? As much as I enjoyed it, I would I will still be more excited for Dark Souls. Always. Or a Dark Souls esque from FromSoft. Hello, Patrick. How am I doing tonight? Uh, pretty good. Everyone's alive. Although I'm guessing nobody could die yet at this point. Locked. Um, oh, <laughs> you can do this. really trusted that that was not going to break underneath him when he jumped on it. I would be like very gingerly like one toe down as much as I can before dropping. I don't know. He just went all in. Full body weight. Everything is broken and decaying in this place. Mold. And, but you know, I'm sure it'll hold my weight. You hope they'll never make a Sekiro 2 because then you feel compelled to play it and have the to relive the stress of a first playthrough all over again. But it was fun though, wasn't it? The stress is addictive. Okay, so we got the key and I don't remember what we needed the key for now. Um, where do we need the key for again? We have to go back through here. Ah, balcony. That's uh, you running around and making footsteps, right, Kate? Right? Whoa. Oh, oh, oh. Just come on. It's not that high. My vertigo is saying otherwise. What's, what floor are they on? Thought we were in a hurry. Don't worry, you look fine. What are you worried about, Miss? Always be camera ready. You look amazing as usual. Oh. We're only on the third floor. We're not that high. <laughs> we're only on the third story. And this is, it's only three stories tall, it looks like. It's not that bad, guys. It's not that bad. We're not that high up. Uh, 
Uh, but where are we going? Oh, here is something. Oh, possessions belonging to victims of H.H. H. Holmes, Chicago, 1896. Yeah, these are the two from the beginning. The two people. I forgot their names already. The newlyweds. Wow. Why is this here and not in like a museum? How does this guy have this stuff? King, check this out. It's his hat. Ooh. Oh, wow. H. H. Holmes. Are we gonna touch it? Oh my god. Ah! Fuck! You okay? No! I just... This fucking thing popped out of nowhere. <laughs> See? Well, what is it? Some kind of animatronic? Yeah, a fucked up looking one. It can't hurt you. It, it has you. a knife. It scared you twice. <sighs> it scared hey, me. Charlie, it's eight. Dinner time. Damn it. We didn't get anything. There's still time. We got a heart attack. Yeah. Let's not keep Charlie waiting or we'll never hear the end of it. Fuck. Hey, be civil with Charlie. <laughs> He's the one who chose to be uncivil blowing up on me when all I did was my job. I'm the one doing the talking on camera, not him. Come on, you came in hot on him and you know it. Not that you're wrong, but you know he meets anger with more anger. This is on him, Mark, not me. Uh... Uh, you know... The rest of us are tired of watching you guys fight. And I'm tired of having those fights. He's just jealous. Jealous? Yeah, he doesn't like that I'm the one getting invited on to talk shows. You mean talk show? But the point is, I'm the one people see on screen, so they want to talk to me, and he's being a baby about it. I can't say half the shit he writes. It may look good on the page, but there's more to it. I'm trying to help, and he throws it back in my face. Because you... Because he thinks you're just trying to get content for your showreel. What if I was? That's just how directors have to be. That's how directors have to be. It's their job. They have a vision. Ego has to play into it a little bit. That's why I just shut up and point the camera. That doesn't mean he has to be an asshole. No, but imagine if you were in his shoes. Forty-something, still waiting for your big break. Kate, this show is the closest he'll ever have to success. I guess. Doesn't matter. One way or another, I am moving on from Lana at Entertainment. Mm, thought we'd move on together. I guess I thought we'd move on together, like a team. Mark, look, this isn't your passion. It's just a job for you until you get your name out there as a photographer. You can't expect... I know. I hate this shitty documentary stuff. Charlie has got a clue about how to frame a shot, let alone tell a story. And get on with it. You're right. Charlie would replace us in a second if he wouldn't be inconveniencing himself. He's using us. I deserve better than this. So do you. We all do. Kate, Mark, dinner is on. Aren't you hungry? Yeah, on our way. Great. Did he hear us? Obviously, Mark. Uh. Uh. Oh, I think I know why he waits like a few days before people start dying. Like, I, w I think I know part of the reason why there's this time gap because he's building mannequins of all of his victims. And I'm not exactly sure what the purpose of the mannequins are, but... Hey, guys. That's why it takes some, like, some days, I think. What's for dinner? 
Think it's okay if we pour some wine? God, please do. Has anyone seen Mr. Dumet? Shouldn't we wait for him? Just poor Mark. Um, let's be concerned. Who doesn't show up to their own dinner party? Oh, I'm this guy now? None of you did anything to piss him off, did you? No, Dad. <laughs> him not showing certainly tracks with every other lawn at entertainment inside source. Come on, Kate. Hello? Mr. Dumet? Dinner time! Ah, oh, Mr. Dumet. I love what you've done with your hair. Where's the you other girl? on the wine. Hope that's all right with Dumet? you. Dumet? There she yeah, is. Yeah, back to it ain't coming. Wait, what, why? You saw all the snide things you tweeted from his limo. I didn't. What are you talking about, Jamie? He got back aboard the ferry and left. What? When? Right after we got to our rooms. He just left. You're sure? Can't be. You must be mistaken. I'm not blind. I know what I saw. Why would he leave? That makes no sense. They're in a big ass hurry. Guess you were right. There was some kid here. I saw them together when I was looking for my room. It must be his kid, right? Didn't he say something about family? I don't remember. Either way, why did they leave? Does that mean we're the only ones here? I was thinking that Dumet was like willingly a part of this, but then I was wondering just now, why would he bring his child here to this place? And I think that um, he's being uh, like, like she's hostage and she's like, uh, what is it blackmail? What's the term I'm looking for? Like he's using her as collateral. And then if Dumet, if Dumet does what um, Mr. Killer, whoever it is, is uh, says, then his, you know, his family can be free, can be free and safe and whatever. But yeah, he's basically. Why would he invite us here and to hostage. dinner and then just mm -hmm. leave? Um. Well, I'm sure he has a good reason. I'm sure he has his reasons. Who knows what could have cropped up? Maybe he ordered pizza for dinner and the dock is as far as they deliver. This could work to our advantage. How? Well, think about it. We're still here, surrounded by perfect visuals. The plan is still on track. But we have there no food and no here. cigarettes. We shouldn't leap to conclusions. Or maybe he's just plain crazy. It wouldn't be the first time Charles booked an expert who's nothing more than a serial killer groupie. Not that I want to agree with you, like, ever. <sighs> but that's what I've been saying. Demet is no damn good. But that doesn't explain why he stitched out on us. He had to go back to establish an alibi. What are you... You know, so when our bodies wash up on the other side of the lake, he has plausible deniability. <sighs> oh, God, <sighs> Jamie. Can you stop trying to make this worse? She might helping. be onto something. Okay, fine. Just don't come crying to me if you end up dead. What is wrong with you? I'm just saying. Guess you never found your cigarettes. The bitch of it is, I did find a machine, but just like everything else in this fucking place, it's ancient and broken. So what are we doing? We just gonna sit here and pretend to eat? What's the plan, Charlie? Maybe if we all just sit here quietly and wish really hard, the magical post-production pixies will just assemble a cut for us and send it to the network. What? <laughs> She's like, you know what? I'm just Let's not going to say anything. to the post-production pixies and Charlie's brilliant plans. <sighs> All right, enough. I would like to toast to all of you. Let's just be nice. Now, I would like to toast all of you. Really. I know that I'm the butt of your jokes, and that's just my cross to bear as the patriarch of our little family. Mark and Jamie, the two of you do the work of a team of ten. And Kate, despite our bickering, you are the heart of this show. You keep people interested. And Aaron, who lost my cigarettes. <laughs> no, why would he be nice to everybody except Aaron, who is just a sweetheart? 
And finally, to our newest recruit, Erin, we would be lost without you. Who else could we trust to remember every little detail? Except the cigarettes. <laughs> Thank you all for your hard work. You're here. Cheers. 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 To us. Mazel tov. What we can get here can take the show to the next level. Sure, if we have time to get it all. Yeah, he totally hurt us. Nah. There's no way he'd say all that nice shit if he heard us. Maybe we <laughs> shouldn't talk about it right this second. You brought it up. <sighs> what was that, Kate? Nothing important, just spitballing some ideas. I think she'll look best if we can really make the backgrounds look as creepy as possible. Shouldn't be hard. Um, does anyone else think it's weird? Dumet hasn't showed up yet. She said he yeah, left. I don't think he's coming. What do we want to do first, Charles? You're the boss. Thank you. I think it makes sense for us to start in the lobby. There's still decent light to work with, and it's symbolically where things would begin in the murder castle. With what light's already in there, we just need to set up a couple of our own. We can make it look as if it were lit by gaslight. Perfect. What if Dumet shows up? Um, you know, I'll be having a strong word. If he tells us to stop, I'm going to be having a strong word with him. He's put us in this position. All right, everyone grab what they need, and we'll meet in the lobby. Let's be as professional as possible from here on in, please. No mistakes. Perfection. If he comes back, I don't want him to see us fucking about or arguing. Good call. We're on it. Right, guys? Fantastic. I'd love to hear that. Can we please get this man his cigarettes? Because Shouldn't take me long at all. He's really starting to aggravate me. <laughs> Great. 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 Great, great, great. Kate and Mark found a tape of Manny Sherman being interviewed by Agent Monday, and Dumet didn't show up for dinner. Hey. Marie's necklace and ring were on display in Dumet's hotel. No new secrets. Oh, look, his relationship with everybody went up a little bit. I saw that in real time. Wow. Cool. 